The Raptors in possibly the final game from this team as we know it. Come away with the win against the San Antonio Spurs at home. A certain player from the Spurs may not be leaving with his team and might stay in Toronto beyond the trade deadline. We'll see on that and we'll see which Raptors players might be going away. We'll talk about this game in particular, how we got the dub and Siakam's unreal performance. And we will be discussing what you can really expect from the Raptors before tomorrow's or if you're watching this in the postgame show, today's 3 p.m. trade deadline. So the Raptors come away with the win here against the San Antonio Spurs, 112-98. to I'm sick. My voice is going away. As you can tell, uh, based on what you're hearing right now, my voice is shot. But we're going to do our best to soldier on through this one and soldier on through this post-game show. The Raptors, as I mentioned, with this win here. And this game might have a bit more meaning. Yeah, it's just a game against the San Antonio Spurs. But you know what? The Raptors have just won three games in a row. I believe they've only done that once this season. If not, this is the first time we have done that this season. But the bigger implications, of course, at the moment are on the Raptors and their planes going, their plans, excuse me, going toward tomorrow, or if you're watching this postgame show, the February 9th trade deadline, which is at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Fred Van Vliet is the name that's been floated around. Same with Trent. They were out here tonight. It could be the last time we see them. I think there's partially uh, some sort of possibility where this is the last time as well we see Siakam, but I I would highly doubt that. But a very real possibility. This is the last time you see Trent in a Raptors uniform, Van Vliet in a Raptors uniform, and possibly the last time you see Jakob Pertl in a Spurs uniform. And we'll go through that a little bit later on. But let's talk about what went into this Raptors win. It was... Mostly comfortable. It was mostly comfortable. A pretty poor second quarter got the Spurs back in the game, but the Raptors controlled the third quarter and were in control the fourth quarter completely. Let's go to why it was in control, and a big reason was the outstanding night from Pascal Siakam. 37 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. If that wasn't impressive enough, 15 for 21 shooting. Siakam was on it from the jump, helped carry us on to this win. Further down, we see some not great numbers from Fred Van Vliet. 16 points, four, uh, four assists, two rebounds, four steals, which is nice, and a block. Unfortunately, four turnovers, which I guess he makes up for a bit with his steals, but still better. We want better. And uh, what is unfortunate is the five for 16 shooting and one for seven for three. Thankfully, did not need him to be exceptional today. Gary Trent, like I said, another one who could be on the way out. Six for 16, 15 points, five rebounds, three assists. For Gary Trent Jr., we... Like, this is nothing, like, he's prone to games like this. It, it's solid. It's not great, but it's Gary shooting the basketball. Barnes and Achua weren't at their most effective tonight, but they still put up good numbers. Both get 10 points. Scotty Barnes gets nine rebounds. Achua gets seven. Barnes gets four assists. Barnes shoots four for 10. Achua four for six. We did not have to be extraordinary today to take down this Spurs team. We were favored by 11. Got the cover as well. Boucher. Another excellent game off the bench. He has 18 of the bench's 24 points in this game. He was 6 for 10, 11 rebounds, um, 3 steals, 3 blocks as well. And the biggest thing right now for Boucher, is what, are the, what is allowing him to go on such a good run, is that 3s are falling. I think this is 9 games in a row or so where he's hit a 3, and he was 2 for 4 from deep today. That was a big deal. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of guys shooting... Like taking a lot of shots for the Spurs. They're not that good of a team, but you can only beat what is in front of you. And the Raptors did just that. They shoot 49% from the field. They shoot 36% from three. I'll take that every day of the week. Spurs shoot 40 and 28. Similar shots. We take 88. They they take 87, but we make 43 to their 35. That's your separation. Yeah, we got a lot more rebounds. A lot of those because of the defensive ones due to their poor shooting night. Turnover-wise, wasn't our best. We commit 17, but thankfully they commit 16 and don't punish us there. This game straight up comes down to efficiency. The Raptors had Siakam, who was hyper efficient today, and helped lead us to this victory. A comfortable victory in the end, as I mentioned, 14 points. Now, what's interesting as we head towards the trade deadline? 
there's a lot that could happen. The Raptors could rinse the team. The Raptors, like, there's a possibility they straight up do nothing, which I would be annoyed with, but I think the likely scenario is that very little happens. One key player gets traded, something along the lines of that. It seems, though, there is a lot of interest from the Raptors to picking up Jakob Pertl. A lot of interest in getting Pertl. I'd love to bring in Pertl. And I think if they bring him in, there would be discussions of an extension being in place for Pertl to sign to remain here. Jakob Pertl, I think there's a misconception about his longevity here. People in chat today were talking about him as some veteran player bringing in. Jakob Pertl's 27 years old. So any contract he signs, he's pretty much signing to play through his prime. And I'm not sure Masai Ujiri is super keen on completely resetting this team. So Pertl helps you for the rest of the season and helps you, more importantly, beyond that. But for the rest of the season, now I'm pretty firmly set on the fact that I'd like to kind of go in the different direction here on the season, but we've won three games in a row. We are 26 and 30. The sixth place Miami, he would be tough to catch, but they're on 29, maybe 30 wins after today if they finished a job against the Pacers. Not completely out of reach. And then you go to the Raptors' upcoming schedule. Again, I'm saying I'm comfortable losing the rest of the way, but Raptors might just win out of this. They might win out of this slump here. Upcoming nine games are all pretty winnable. We have the Jazz at home on Friday, Pistons at home, Magic at home, three very winnable games. Pelicans at home after the All-Star break, they've been struggling. You might win that. Pistons again is winnable. Cleveland away is tough. Then you have the Bulls at home, winnable. You have the Wizards twice away, like very winnable games as well. There's a lot of games upcoming. The Raptors like might be able to win. And we don't have a direction necessarily set by the front office. I feel like our record has kind of picked itself. But I'm just saying, I'm not going to completely rule out the front office thinking like we can try to win some things. But I will say, again, my side is I'd like to subdue ourselves in this season. I would like to pick up Pirtle just because you, know, you get that now. You sign him. You've got him for next season. You don't need to go into the offseason wondering where your rim protector is going to come from. But we don't even know if that's going to happen. My prediction is Jakob Pirtle does get traded to the Raptors. However, other than that, I predict OG and Anobi will stay. I think the Raps will ask for too much and a just no deal will happen. I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. I think Siakam will stay. I think Trent and Van Vliet are very much live though, as is OG, but I think Trent and Van Vliet in particular are very live going into tomorrow. Now, again, I'm not ruling out the Raptors going for it this season, not going for it, but hey, just go out there and play. We're not going to commit to tanking, but see if you can string some wins together. I would like to focus on, re not rebuilding, but retooling for next season at this point. But if you can't get those trades, you can't make a lot of deals happen, and you know what? You still have a good team in play. I'm just saying, the next nine games all p could put you in a decent position to get into a playoff position. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I support that. I'm saying it's a possibility and a reality that could the Raptors could be facing here. Let's appreciate tonight. This is possibly the last time we saw a lot of guys in Raptors uniforms beyond just the core here. A lot could go down. There could be fireworks. There could be nothing. There could be very little. My prediction is one or two trades for the Raptors. Shake things up. I support it. But I think the fan base collectively can say at this point, that they are prepared for something new. They are prepared for some changes here. And I think there's excitement about what the next chapter of this team could possibly be. That wraps up for today from Amateur. Please make sure if you did enjoy, you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Does go a long way to supporting us. And want to remind you guys, February 9th, Thursday, trade deadline day. It's here from 2 to 4 p.m. on The Hammer YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at the Hammer HQ, I'm going live for a trade deadline watch party and bonus for Raptors fans from 2.15 to 3 p.m. Eastern time. I will be joined 
by Josh Goodwin of Raptors Digest Amateur Hour. And Josh Goodwin of Raptors Digest, Raptors Digest Amateur Hour, partially coming together for the very first time on the Hammer YouTube channel to live react to the trade deadline. Thank you, everybody. On Post Game Show, we'll see you again next time as the Raptors take on the Jazz on Friday. Maybe a new look team for us, and maybe Russell Westbrook suiting up for the Jazz.